What would you do if you loved the place where you live, but things were changing quickly, and you saw the fabric of town life unraveling? If neighbors you used to wave to suddenly became enemies? School teachers were bullied along with their students? If town meetings became shouting matches? Kiss my butt! and trails in the woods became lines drawn in the sand. We are at a point of change that things are happening too quickly for some of the people to be able to accept. They're trying to quiet us down because we're angry. We're, everything's being taken away from us, our jobs, our retirement, our recreation. It's a transition point. They're out of work, they feel threatened, throw a few lies around, target a few people, call them green Nazis, they're not people anymore. It's not just a little local issue. And I think people really need to understand that. We've always been able to sit down and respectfully disagree, and now it's turned to violence. The Flathead Valley lies in Northwest Montana, 60 miles from the Canadian border. Just under 80,000 people live here, but nearly two million visit every year. Kalispell, the largest town, sits right in the middle of the valley and at the center of this rapidly growing region. Our film was sparked by the threat of extremist violence and how the town responded, but it was only the tip of the story. We quickly began to see an entire landscape of smoldering conflicts, especially over growth in the environment. How to maintain the quality of life here has become a burning issue, fanned by anger and fear. This is a story about one community facing deep divisions that are being felt across the country. Look closely and you may see your town too. I don't care what color the uniform is, do not surrender your weapon. It all started with an email from a former cop who wanted some advice about how to deal with the militia movement in Kalispell, Montana. It wasn't surprising. White supremacists and militia groups had declared the Northwest to be their homeland. Why call a filmmaker when your town is in trouble? It was because we had produced some PBS shows about people fighting hate crimes called Not In Our Town. The news from Kalispell was disturbing, but like a whiff of smoke on a cold day, I put it in the back of my mind. Then, something happened to make me pay attention. Berger took off in a truck, armed with an automatic rifle. The national media reported that an anti-government domestic terror cell called Project 7 had been uncovered in Kalispell. Finally, at 1.30 this afternoon, negotiators convinced Burgert to surrender. Police arrested fugitive leader David Burgert and discovered an enormous cache of weapons. Along with them were the names and addresses of local police, judges, prosecutors, and their families. This is a sniper gun, a smaller caliber gun uh, that we had that had two silence barrels. And it was a 22 caliber, and uh, the, only, the only purpose for that gun is assassination. An informant told police there was a plot to kill these government leaders. Some of what we faced here is certainly a, an example of domestic terrorism. One of the challenges for me was to have to go home and talk to my wife and kids about uh, the possibility that the threat not only was related to me, but was related to my family. Those who were named on the Project 7 list were not the only ones who were affected. A number of leading citizens I talked to in the Valley said they would not speak on camera because they felt it might threaten their families. Some people believe Project 7 was a symptom of an illness that went beyond this single outbreak of militia activism. There's been a long history here of violence 
from, from groups like Project 7 individuals. We had a police officer who was shot on the Swan Highway a few years before I got here. Um, there was a, a woman's reproductive health clinic that was bombed because- Brenda Kitterman was the ex-cop that had contacted me initially. Since she had moved to Kalispell a year earlier, she'd been trying to encourage people to stand up against um, racism and the militia movement. When Project 7 came out, I was proved like I was right. And I would have given anything to have been proved that I was wrong. She was gaining support for a town meeting, but she says there were repercussions for her activism. I've had a, a lot of threatening phone calls, sometimes middle of the night. I've had a tire slash in my daughter's car. Uh, my daughter was also chased with a shotgun. That one was pretty scary. At the same time, another voice was being heard in the valley. There is no racism in Montana. The liberals' new way of attacking conservatives is number one, call them controversial, hate, hate speech, hater. Now that's the liberals' new way of calling conservatives the in racial slur word. And I'm sure you interviewed every left-wing lunatic liberal in the valley this weekend. It's, it's basically rural America and, and the values that are associated with it. John Stokes was a real estate broker in the state of Washington before he moved to the Flathead Valley in the early 90s. He made an unsuccessful run for the Montana Senate in 96. Four years later, he bought radio station KGEZ and started his own morning talk show. We talk about things that no one else wants to talk about. There's no subject we won't touch, and, and there's no call we won't take. Um, and that's... And that's been kind of fun. It's unique because what we want to do is say out loud what people think in the morning when they're reading the news story about, boy, that's outrageous. We want our side to be heard, you know, as an American. And uh, we feel right now that there's a lot of bias uh, being presented uh, in Congress. You know, they're, they're the ones who make laws, not, not special interest groups or, or uh, people like a certain extreme environmentalists, you know. They want to act like they're the victim. They're not the victim. We're the victims. We're the ones losing our jobs. We're the ones losing our livelihood. Not them.